Illinois State was looking for a good first game outing as they hosted St. Xavier at Hancock Stadium. This was a game that would set the tone for the year. Demetrius Johnson opened the scoring for the Redbirds as he dashed 70 yards for a 7-0 lead. Johnson was simply unstoppable and finished the first quarter with an astounding 108 rushing yards. For the game, he totaled 161 yards on just 17 carries. Jans Vaughn's two-yard run capped a brief seven-play, 46-yard drive to put Illinois State up 14-0. Antoine Oliver halted the ensuing St. Xavier drive with his second career interception as a Redbird. The Birds took control of the game at 20-0 when Vaughn threw his first career touchdown pass on a fade route to Laurent Robinson covering 17 yards. Stephen Carroll's streak of consecutive extra point kicks made ended at 86 when he missed for the first time since October 13, 2001, just the second miss of his entire college career. Regardless of the miss, he now owns the school record, breaking the previous mark of 85 straight set by Paul Politi. Demetrius Johnson continued to tear through the St. Xavier defense with two more touchdown runs of 5 and 10 yards to give the Redbirds an insurmountable 34-0 lead at the half. Illinois State began the second half with Boomer Grigsby recovering a St. Xavier fumble, which led to a 21-yard field goal by Carroll. Early in the fourth quarter, Vaughn connected with a wide-open Robinson for a 74-yard touchdown catch and a 44-0 lead. Yance Vaughn had a good opening game outing as a quarterback. He connected on 13 passes for 225 yards and two touchdowns. Demetrius Johnson had a tremendous rushing game with 161 yards. The final score, 44-14, was an important confidence booster to the offense and defense going into the Minnesota Gophers contest. The Redbirds made some noise against the Minnesota Gophers early and kept the game close, losing 37-21. Illinois State got in the first punch when Yance Vaughn hit Ramon Barber on a 43-yard scoring play for a 7-0 lead. The Redbirds continued to play tough and forced Minnesota to punt in their second possession. However, the Redbirds were thwarted as the Gophers intercepted a Vaughn pass in the end zone. Minnesota finally edged into the lead with under nine minutes to play in the half. When Marion Barber III ran five yards through the heart of the ISU defense, it was 14-7. Midway through the second quarter, the Redbirds tied things up. Vaughn connected with Jason Horton on a 22-yard pass with just 109 before intermission. It was Horton's first career touchdown catch as a Redbird. Minnesota came right back, marched down the field, and grabbed the lead on a 10-yard dash by Barber in the closing seconds. The extra point was blocked by Justin Martindale, and the Gophers led 20-14 at the half. Minnesota boosted the margin in the second half with an early field goal to make it 23-14. Then the Redbirds fell victim to the big play. Lawrence Maroney broke loose for an 80-yard touchdown. Next, Cupido and Ernie Wheelwright combined for an 80-yard pass with the Gophers a commanding 37-14 lead. Sophomore defensive back James Temple gave the Redbirds a turnover and set up a touchdown in the fourth quarter. Temple stripped Justin Valentine of the ball at the Minnesota goal line. Roughing the kicker penalty set up the score. Vaughn's keeper in the fourth quarter made the final. Gophers 37, Redbirds 21. Demetrius Johnson continued to be a productive rusher for ISU, gaining 104 yards on 14 carries. He was the first opposing ball carrier to gain more than 100 yards against Minnesota in 15 games. Illinois State overcame a nine-point fourth quarter deficit for their second win of the season. The game was tightly contested all 60 minutes. Eastern scored first on a 14-play, 80-yard drive, resulting in a Vincent Webb one-yard run. Midway through the quarter, senior linebacker Boomer Grigsby achieved a personal milestone with a quarterback sack, moving him into a tie for fifth place on the Redbirds' all-time loss list. The Illinois State came back with 2.36 left in the first quarter. They're given excellent field position from a 12-yard punt return by Kyle Hill. Demetrius Johnson gained 14 yards on a run. He ended up carrying the ball five times for 25 yards during the drive. Yance Vaughn moved the Redbirds into a tie on a 15-yard toss to Laurent Robinson, who made a leaping grab. The Illinois State grabbed the lead in the second quarter. Vaughn passed to Ramon Barber for 11. 
He had Mike Larson on a 25-yarder to get to the Eastern 15. The drive culminated on a 13-yard touchdown pass to Jason Horton. Eastern Illinois Panthers tied it up in the second quarter's closing moments. Matt Shaver hit Adam Parcel for 13 yards and a touchdown. The first half ended with a 14-all score. The third quarter went back and forth until Illinois State's Josh Crespin sacked Andrew Harris, forcing a fumble, which was recovered by Boomer Grigsby on the 11. The Redbirds took advantage of the break. Vaughn rushed down to the two and then passed to Dave Mortis, and it was 21-14 in favor of ISU. A late third quarter drive covering 77 yards in eight plays resulted in a one-yard touchdown by Matt Schabert, and Eastern had tied it up. The Panthers began to take control in a well-executed 12-play drive of 83 yards. The defense halted the advance, which brought up fourth and one. Despite the defensive stop, Eastern had taken off about six minutes from the clock and went ahead on a Steve Keen field goal, 24-21. A game-breaking turnover occurred on the Redbirds' next possession. ISU's LaShawn Bullock fumbled after being hit by Chad Cleveland the ball popped into the hands of Jamar Day, who scrambled 30 yards into the end zone, and suddenly it was Eastern leading 31-21 with just 6-17 left. A poised Redbirds team responded. Vaughn passed to Mike Larson for a 27-yard gain. Ramon Barber's catch brought them to within striking distance. The play covered 33 yards. Vaughn hit Barber again. This time he took it down to the 10. A pass interference call on Eastern gave the Redbirds first and goal on the two. Earl Newby carried it over for the touchdown. The Birds were back in the game, trailing 31-28. The game's turning point was the ensuing kickoff. Bill Ronick forced a fumble on the return, and Pierre Jackson came up with the ball on the Eastern 22. Vaughn's 16-yard pass to Jason Horton set up the go-ahead touchdown. Vaughn then called his own number and took it over from the three. With 2.37 left, Illinois State led 35-31. Eastern got dangerously close to winning the game on the ensuing possession. Mid-range passes aided by a roughing the passer and pass interference penalties. The Panthers reached the Redbirds 18. Four straight incomplete passes by Eastern clinched victory for Illinois State. It turned out to be an emotionally draining contest for the Redbirds and Indiana State on October 2nd. Neither team could foresee the exciting finish which was to come. Indiana State got on the board first, scoring on their opening series. Philip Johnson threw a 27-yard pass to Jamie Petrowski with 8.37 left to take a 7-0 lead. It was a time-consuming drive, burning more than six minutes. After Illinois State lost the ball near midfield, the Sycamores increased their lead to 14 0 with 6.50 left in the half on a 57 yard pass to Marcus Naves. Illinois State got things moving late in the second quarter. Quarterback Yance Vaughn passed to Kevet Mickle for 28 yards. His next target was Laurent Robinson for 17 yards. Nickel again was on the receiving end, and he got the Redbirds into the red zone. A screen to Ramon Barber placed the ball on the one. From there, Earl Newby finally got them on the board. The halftime score was 14-7. Illinois State had a chance to cut the lead to four early in the third, but Carroll's 37-yard field goal attempt was blocked. The Sycamores took possession at their own 27-yard line and went the distance, scoring on a six-yard run by Jake Shields to go up 21-7. Just three minutes later, Indiana State blocked an Illinois State punt and took possession at the Redbird four-yard line. The Sycamores then broke through on a three-yard touchdown run by Sidney Montfort to take a 28-7 lead with 6.22 left in the third. Redbird Demetrius Johnson scored from 16 yards out to cut the lead to 28-14 in the waning seconds of the third quarter. Redbirds came out with a flurry of activity in the fourth quarter. Laurent Robinson helped the Redbirds cut the lead to seven on a 14-yard pass from Vaughn with 12.30 left in the fourth quarter. Then Boomer Grigsby's strip and Antoine Oliver's recovery of an Indiana State fumble at the Sycamore 39 led to a three-yard game-tying touchdown run by Johnson with 7.59 left in the game. Newby put Illinois State on top with his second touchdown of the game with 1.59 left on a six-yard run to give the Birds 
a 35-28 advantage. Indiana State's Sam Logan was left alone downfield on the Sycamore's next possession and scored on a 58-yard pass with 109 left to tie the game again and send it to overtime. In overtime, Hooper's 34-yard field goal gave the Sycamores a 38-35 lead, but Carroll forced another period with a 35-yard field goal to tie the game a third time before the ISU fumble at the one-yard line in the second overtime period. Indiana State was able to capitalize as place kicker Kyle Hooper knocked down a 36-yard field goal to give the Sycamores a 41-38 victory in front of 2,825 at Memorial Stadium in Terre Haute, Indiana. The Redbirds were taking on the 4-1 Southwest Missouri State Bears in a gateway conference battle. The Illinois State wanted to even up the conference record and knock off one of the favorites. The Bears struck first early in the contest. Steve Watson blocked Ryan Hoffman's punt. The Bears moved into field goal range and John Cyphers booted one from 45 yards out. The Redbirds scored on the first play of the second quarter. Demetrius Johnson scampered for 30 yards and a touchdown. Southwest Missouri State caught a break to put them in position for their first touchdown. A punt to the Redbirds it was caught by Dan Passarelli it was a fumble on the play. The ball was recovered by the Bears on the Redbirds 28. On first down, A.J. Porter hooked up with Stephen Rush for 28 yards and the score. And with the PAT, the Bears led 10-7. Illinois State came right back with a 10-play drive. Stephen Carroll's 38-yard field goal tied the score. It didn't take long for SMS to regain the lead. Cody Pratt's 34-yard run put the ball on the state three-yard line, and from there, Preston Porte took it in. Momentum swung back to Illinois State on the next possession. Joe Watkins made a fine kickoff return to give them excellent field position. Demetrius Johnson rushed for 16 yards to the SMS 20. Brian Thompson took the pitch and covered 18 yards to the two. A handoff to Thompson made it 17 all late in the second quarter. The momentum changed even faster on the Illinois State kickoff. Stephen Rush took it 100 yards for a touchdown, and SMS had a 24-17 halftime lead. The Bears started to take charge early in the third quarter. A.J. Porter completed a touchdown pass to Rush for a 31-17 lead. An important possession for the Redbirds began on their own 43. Brian Thompson rushed for 13 yards into Bears territory. On the next play, the holding call slowed their advance, but a few moments later, a 20-yard pass from Yance Vaughn to Dave Mortis moved the ball to the Bears, 24. Six plays later, Vaughn took it in himself for the touchdown. He cut the margin to 31-24 after three quarters. The Bears moved the ball well on their first possession in the fourth quarter. They headed down to the Illinois State two-yard line after a 14-play drive. Cody Pratt got to the one, but he was hit by Boomer Grigsby. The ball came loose and Niall Campbell fell on it for the Redbirds. Redbirds showed their character when their offense came on the field following the turnover. Demetrius Johnson got them breathing room with a 10-yard run. Thompson ran for 13 near midfield. Yance Vaughn threw to Jason Horton for 12, and Illinois State was on the move. Brian Thompson drove through the Bears' defense for a 19-yard run. Vaughn finished off the magnificent drive by hooking up with Laurent Robinson and a touchdown. The Birds had driven 99 yards in 15 plays. It was 31-all. The sustained drive took the fight out of the Bears and fired up the Redbirds' defense. Illinois State forced a punt, got the ball back with just 1.38 to play, but they found themselves a long way from field goal range. They quickly ran 11 plays. They combined the pass and run to keep the Bears off balance. Thompson provided the big play with a 17-yard run to the SMS 29. They were approaching field goal territory. Vaughn got them within range in a 12-yard scamper to the Bears 17. With 16 seconds left, Stephen Carroll's 35-yard field goal provided the winning margin 
and the Redbirds had literally come back from the brink of defeat. It was a serious setback for the Illinois State Redbirds as they squared off against Western Illinois and Macomb. It was a game they controlled for much of the first half, but things got out of hand in the second half. The Redbirds started off well in the first quarter. Demetrius Johnson's 19-yard run set up Stephen Carroll's 48-yard field goal. They're off to a 3-0 lead. Western Illinois took a 7-3 lead on a 33-yard Steve LaFalse pass to Travis Glassford late in the quarter. The Redbirds bounced back and in three plays it regained the lead. Yats Vaughn passed to Jason Horton for 42 yards. Then Brian Thompson rushed for an 18-yard touchdown. At the end of one, ISU led 10-7. On their opening second quarter possession, Vaughn completed a 21-yard pass to Kevet Mickle and another to Jason Horton, this one for 28 yards. Brian Thompson gained 12 to the Western Illinois 9. From there, Vaughn capped the drive with a 14-yard strike to Laurent Robinson. Score Redbirds 17, Western 7. The margin was cut to three after LaFalls connected with James Norris for 52 yards. It was now 17-14. Two possessions later, the Redbirds put up another quick seven points. It was set up when Western's Chris Coffey knelt down to handle a bad snap. The ball went over to ISU and Vaughn took it in himself. The Redbirds extended the lead to 24-14. Illinois State could not stop a late second quarter 84-yard drive. The half ended with a 24-21 score. Midway through the third quarter, Western picked up a touchdown to take a 27-24 lead. Steve LaFalls gave Western a 10-point lead with 345 left in the third. It was an 83-yard connection to Reggie Gray. The Leathernecks extended the lead to 37-24 with a fourth quarter field goal. Illinois State's offense got back on track with a drive starting from their 46. The big play was Yance Vaughn's 33-yard pass to Kevet Mickle. Three plays later was Vaughn tossing to Jason Horton for the score. They're now within striking distance at 37-31. A damaging blow to the birds came a few minutes later. Western's Justin Langen kicked a 43-yard field goal, and the deficit was nine. With only 244 left to play, ISU needed two scores in a hurry. Vaughn through to Thompson for 16 and to Mickle for 20. From the Western 25, Vaughn launched a pass to the goal line, but it was intercepted and the outcome was decided. Western topped Illinois State in a shootout, 40-31. Illinois State faced a turning point in the season at 3-3 overall and 1-2 and in the Gateway Conference. Their homecoming game with Youngstown State took on extra importance. The excitement began with the opening kickoff. LaShawn Bullock took the kick and raced 97 yards for a touchdown. The Redbirds grabbed a 7-0 lead. The Penguins took a little longer to respond, but the result was the same. An 82-yard drive made the score 7-all. A field goal gave Youngstown State a 10-7 first quarter lead. The Redbirds found their offense in the second quarter. Yance Vaughn threw 22 yards to LaRock Robinson for a big gain. Brian Thompson ran for eight. A key play was Vaughn's 26-yard pass to Kevet Mickle, and the Birds were in scoring position. Vaughn's pass to Mike Larson gave them a 14-10 lead midway through the quarter. Illinois State's defense played well, but a special teams mishap put them in a bad position. The Penguins scored a few moments later. Stephen Carroll's 38-yard field goal put the Redbirds back on top with 3.45 left in the third quarter at 20-17. In the waiting moments of the third, the Penguins regained the lead on a Josh Kaysen run, 24-20. The play of the game came with about 12 and a half minutes left. Joe Watkins fielded a punt at the Redbirds 48 and took it all the way back. It gave Illinois State a 27-24 lead. Alex Fillin came up with an important interception three minutes later. 
it led to a Carroll field goal for the final margin, 30-24. Illinois State was shooting for its first road win and a major step toward a winning record. They faced off against Western Kentucky. Western Kentucky struck first with a six yard touchdown pass. The Redbirds responded in the second quarter with a long 14 play, 80 yard drive. Yance Vaughn passed 14 yards to Kevette Mickle. Brian Thompson rushed 10 to the Redbird 47. Thompson grabbed a 13 yard pass to the Western Kentucky 27. Vaughn found Ramon Barber for 13 yards and the score. A hilltopper field goal put the Redbirds behind 10-6 in the second quarter. Vaughn quickly led the team downfield. He tossed a 32-yarder to Laurent Robinson to put them in scoring position and followed it up with a 36-yard strike to Jason Horton and carried a 13-10 lead into halftime. Western Kentucky regained the lead in the third quarter and pushed the advantage to 24-13 in the fourth on Brian Porter's nine-yard run. The Redbirds had a little over 10 minutes to come back. A Vaughn pass to Kovac Mickle got things started. A combination of short passes marched Illinois State downfield. Vaughn took it in himself to make it 24-19. Vaughn's two-point conversion throw to Mickle was successful. The Birds trailed 24-21. Just under three minutes to play, the Redbirds made a bid to win the game. Vaughn hit Laurent Robinson for a nice 20-yard pickup to the Western Kentucky 39. From there, however, a fumble and a quarterback sack halted the drive. Western Kentucky escaped with a 24-21 win, and the Birds are still looking for that elusive road win. Number one ranked Southern Illinois came into normal and showed why they are the number one ranked team in Division I AA. Illinois State did hold the Salukis in check in the first quarter. Boomer Grigsby was in on five tackles in the quarter and before the game was out, he had become the all-time leading tackler in Gateway Conference history with 570. The outstanding senior was credited with 14 tackles for the game. Southern got the game's first break. It came after the Redbirds Nick Passarelli sacked quarterback Joel Samberski forcing a Saluki punt. Joe Watkins received the kick, was hit, and fumbled. Southern recovering it on the Illinois State 40. Six plays later, the Salukis were on the board. The Illinois State struggled to find any offense this day. Trailing 14-0 in the second quarter, the Birds tried to get something started. Yance Vaughn passed to Laurent Robinson for 12 to the Southern Illinois 45. Brian Thompson rushed for six to the 39, but that was as close as they could get. A Southern Illinois score with 27 seconds left before halftime made it 21 to nothing, and a real blow came a few moments later. The Redbirds tried to run out the clock, but instead a fumble was the result. Southern recovered and ended up with a field goal with just two seconds remaining. The Redbirds finally got a score in the third quarter. Vaughn carried for seven. Brian Thompson rushed for nine and then found a hole for 10 more yards. Vaughn hooked up with Kevette Mickle for a 43-yard touchdown pass to make it 31-7. The fourth quarter saw the Redbirds pick up one more score on the Salukis. Ron Robinson caught a Vaughn pass for 31 yards. Thompson rushed for 15 and then Mickle again was the target for Vaughn from 10 yards out. The final score was 41-14 in favor of Southern Illinois. Vaughn, despite the tough game, still became the fourth Illinois State quarterback to pass for 2,000 yards in a season. Northern Iowa was on a hot streak and looked to finish out the season at 7-4. The Panthers scored first on Terrence Freedy's 20-yard run, just 220 into the contest. The Illinois State suffered a costly turnover when Yance Vaughn's pass was picked off at the Redbirds' 18. UNI capitalized on the turnover. Eric Sanders threw a four-yard pass to Freeney, and Illinois State found itself on the wrong end of a 14-0 score. The Panthers scored again when Patrick Hunter hauled in a 74-yard pass from Sanders. Following a UNI field goal, the Redbirds finally got on track. Brian Thompson rushed for nine yards. Two plays later, a nice 20-yard scamper put the ball near midfield. 
Vaughn hooked up with Laurent Robinson. The pass was good for 11 yards. Thompson rushed down to the 30, but the Redbirds faltered on a fourth and three situation. The Illinois State put some points on the board with 152 before halftime. The sustained drive featured a variety of plays and players. Vaughn next pass to Pierre Jackson for a 14-yard gain. Vaughn's short toss to Robinson finished off the series and avoided a first-half shutout, 31-7. The Panthers proved to be too much all game long for the Redbirds' defense. The margin grew to 41-7 before the Redbirds put together one final scoring drive. Pierre Jackson snatched a 32-yarder from Vaughn, and the Redbirds were on the move. A 27-yarder to Jason Horton set up the score. A three-yard pass to Pierre Jackson with three seconds to play. The final score, UNI 41 and Illinois State 14. Illinois State wrapped up the regular season with a contest at Florida Atlantic. The offense needed to rejuvenate itself, but Florida Atlantic would be tough to overcome. The Owls scored on their first possession on a 12-play, 80-yard drive for a 7-0 lead. Illinois State showed some early spark with a 40-yard pass from Vaughn to Jason Horton. The defense, however, came up with some big plays. Niall Campbell had a quarterback sack midway through the second quarter. The Owls had the better of it offensively with a touchdown, field goal, and a safety in the second quarter. Second half saw the Redbirds offense have momentary flashes of what they were capable of doing. Yance Vaughn ran for 12 yards on this third quarter dash. Vaughn connected on a 20 yard pass to Thompson. A fumble killed off the last chance at Redbird points for the game and the Owls came away with a 28 to nothing win. The Redbirds finished the last half of 2004 on the downside, losing their last four, but there's great optimism for the 2005 season due to the vast amount of experience expected to be back. Boomer Grigsby unfortunately won't be returning as he's completed a marvelous career. His stellar senior year earned him one AA.org Defensive Player of the Year honors Besides All-American honors from the American Football Coaches Association, Associated Press, CollegeSportsReport.com, the Sports Network, and the Walter Camp Foundation, he finished third in the Buck Buchanan polling for the nation's top one AA player. Despite the huge hole left by Grigsby's departure, most of the leading defenders and tacklers will be back. Nick Passarelli's three-and-a-half quarterback sacks led the team, and linebacker Cameron Siskowick added 39 solo tackles to shore up the defense. Quarterback Yats Vaughn completed a fine year with 204 completions for 2,485 yards and 18 touchdowns. His yardage total places him at number two for top performance by a Redbird passer. Place kicker Stephen Carroll's 70% success rate ranks him as the school's best all-time in field goal accuracy. Most of the skill positions on offense will be back in 2005. Laurent Robinson and Kevette Mickle should return and add an exciting dimension to the attack. Mickle set a freshman record for catches in a season with 34. Brian Thompson will lead an experienced group in the backfield. Thompson carried for 866 yards and averaged five yards per carry. Earl Newby and LaShawn Bullock had considerable playing time and will make valuable contributions. The Illinois State finished a little down, but they won't stay down for long. The fans should gear up for a highly anticipated 2005 season for the Redbirds.